Here's a quick getting started guide for the Android auto validation using a head unit, a Pixel 4a, and the acronym USB-C switch Android auto kit. So first I've got my head unit wired up to a bench power supply set to 12 volts. And I've actually got the battery connection and the accessory connection wired together. So the head unit just turns on right away. This particular head unit uses a USB-A socket, which would be wired out to the console, for example. And uh, let me just get this guy started up. Let's open up the Pixel 4a here, get rid of the uh, protective film. All right, get this guy starting up. Now I've actually already logged on to this device, downloaded Android Auto, signed into my Google Play account, got maps and all the other permissions set up. So this phone is pretty fresh, but at least has the Android Auto stuff all, all installed. Okay, next I'm gonna open up the USB-C switch kit from Acronym. First, we got a little getting started guide, and on that is a little block diagram that we'll look at in a second. Let's see what else we got in here. We've got a bunch of cables. First, we got a USB-A to USB-C cable, and that's gonna be very useful for this particular head unit, which uses the USB type A cable. Then we got a bunch of standard USB-C to USB-C cables. All right, and then finally in the kit, we've got the USB-C switch. Now this USB-C switch essentially is a four to one multiplexer. And for the Android auto automotive validation, what we're really using this for is to be able to connect and disconnect many, many times the head unit from the, uh, from the mobile device. So first, let's just try the quick check to make sure we're not crazy. And we'll just directly connect the phone to the head unit. So we'll plug in the phone directly here. And what we should see is that Android Auto should pop up on the head unit. So here we go, we got our little USB notification and here comes Android Auto. There we go. So everything's generally working. All right, so to get set up for the PlugBot validation test, we'll need to connect the USB-C switch to the phone in between the head unit. All right, so first is, is we'll uh, connect. You see here, the head unit gets connected to channel zero. And the phone will actually be connected on the common port. It's pretty important that you get these connections in the right spot. Uh, because the software is expecting a certain configuration. Oh, we got some. All right, so now we've got the phone on the common port, the head unit connected to channel zero, and we'll need two more cables. Uh, one cable will go to the control port, and that'll be connected to the computer, which I have over here, a computer with two USB-C ports available. Now, if your computer doesn't have a USB-C port or has a type A port available, of course you can use whatever cable you would like to make that connection to the control port. And then finally, one other connection here from the host to channel one. Now, if your Android device is using Wi-Fi debugging, then you won't necessarily need this, this, uh, this port here. Uh, this in general will work for all configurations. Okay, so now we have the phone connected to common We've got the head unit connected to channel zero. We've got the computer connected to control. And on the other uh, channel one, we have a computer connected there. So that matches our, our block diagram here. Alrighty, now, as you can see, just right away, it didn't immediately start up into Android Auto. After connecting my C-switch, I can launch STEM tool, and I can use this to do some quick debugging and quick setup checking. Okay, so STEM tool will launch and we'll show you all the different acronym devices. We only have the one USB-C switch, I'll select that. And what this is showing is the various states of the many different pins on the USB-C connection. First, on the common port, we can see here that we've got uh, VBUS, and we also have measurements of the CC lines, which will become very useful in a second. And then also on the MUX channel, we can select which MUX channel is connected. And so what we have here, what we're showing here, is that we have five volts going through the switch to the phone, and you can see the phone is actually charging at 500 milliamps. The phone's actually mostly charged at this point. It's just uh, topping off, it seems like. And see if I tap on the phone there, it starts to take a little bit more current, just to show that uh, just turning on the display takes more power. All right, so as you can see, 
we are connected here, but we're not actually getting any Android Auto. The thing is, this phone is actually a USB 3.0 device, and the C switch is a USB 3.0. So what we actually need to do is if we just disable USB 3.0, the phone will recognize that we're only on a USB 2.0 connection, and the Android Auto system will kick in. So now you can see here we got the notification, and Android Auto just popped up on the display there. All right, well, so that's, that's the quick, everything worked pretty well right out of the box. Now there's one problem that you that is pretty common to run into, and I'll just I'll show that. If these cable orientations are slightly wrong, so USB-C is flippable, but not all orientations are created equal. You can see here, I've connected this, and my Android Auto dropped away, and now I've got this CC line that's doing weird toggling. Now what's happening here is that these cables are conflicting with each other. Basically, both of them are connected in a, in a way that makes it so the CC line actually doesn't communicate all the way through. Now, the USB-C switch does have a simple way of fixing that in software. We can just flip that cable, and you can see here the little toggling stops. We get charging, and Android Auto will start, start up right away. However, for the PlugBot automation, we're not using cable flip, so we'll disable that. And the right way to do that is simply rotate the cable back until you see CC lines coming into a steady state. And in most cases, you should see something about like what we have here, where we have about half a volt here and uh, zero volts on the other side. Now, if you have a type C head unit, you'll have some, some different voltages here, but that's all fine. I hope that's helpful. That's the quick start on Android Auto, getting things connected and getting things basically running.